Good morning and welcome to our monthly curriculum update. I'm here today with Mrs. Turner, who is the head of our middle school science department. And I've asked her to come here today because if you came to curriculum night, you know, we've adopted a new set of science standards called the Next Generation Science Standards. And I thought it would be a great time for Mrs. Turner to share a little bit more about why we made that decision, what you might see at home, and how you can help your son and daughter as we make this transition to new science curriculum. So Mrs. Turner, tell me about NGSS. Why did we choose this? Why are these the standards for our students? Well, in the um, NGSS was adopted through, um, started out with about 13 states um, from the United States um, as a branch off of the Common Core and um, the Next Generation Science Standards has now been adopted in 26 states um, and others that are following them along um, in the process. Um, we have decided to uh, adopt NGSS because mainly of their, uh, the rigor and the uh, wholesomeness of science education. Um, in the past, science teachers have just taught uh, content, mostly content areas with the next generation science standards, it kind of forces teachers to embed other components of science teaching. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about those other components? Yes, so um, science, the NGSS standards now are threefold. We call them 3D. Um, the disciplinary core ideas, which we kind of abbreviate DCIs, um, science practices, engineering practices, we call them SEPs, and then the CCCs, cross-cutting concepts, um, which all three are very important in the development in science education. Um, the science and engineering practices are more geared to what scientists do, mm -hmm. um, the analyzing data, um, making models, um, those types of things. Um, this cross-cutting concepts is where it's probably the most, it's going to be the most challenging part for science teachers because it involves literacy, uh, reading in science, um, and it also involves bringing in some math components, which that part is not so hard for science, but the reading part is a little bit because most science teachers say, well, I'm not a reading teacher. How do I assess reading in science? And so, um, Although it's very important for us to do that, it is going to require some professional development in order for science teachers to do it well. Um, and then, of course, the DCIs um, are the contents. So the science content, the cross-curricular, and the science practices. So if I'm a middle school parent and I'm used to really the focus being on the content in science, now my children are coming home with something different. What might I see that's new or different? Most, uh, hopefully, maybe not this year, but in the years as we start to implement this more, um, your child will be doing more reading in science. Um, your child would also have more, um, we, the, the classroom will be more focused on doing the science versus just learning the dates and concept things. Um, so when you ask your child, what did you do today in science? They should be able to give you, well, we did this and we did that more so than we learned this or we learned that. They're actually gonna be doing more science um, versus the just memorizing basic, basic concepts. Um, one other component to that is also gonna be a, a stretch for science teachers is the engineering practices um, because it's, they're separate, <coughs> but they're together. <coughs> and um, I'm not an engineer, I'm a scientist. And so a lot of people will say, well, how does that go together? And so, but the kids are already focused in that, that area. Um, they love tinkering, they love building, they love designing. And so it just makes it a very smooth transition for science teachers to implement some of these engineering practices. Um, one thing that we talk about a lot now is, uh, you know, scientists, um, they develop models, engineers develop prototypes. Well, what are some comparison things about those, 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 those ideas? Um, are they similar? Are they different? Can we work together? And they, in the science, it's almost a natural progression for the kids to have the engineering practices along with the science practices. Excellent. It's interesting you tell that story because this morning in the seventh grade I saw some kids tinkering mm -hmm. with these little magnetic sticks and balls and it was a, such a natural thing yes. for them. 
uh, you could see they were on their way to engineers. Uh, one last question. What if my child is struggling in science? Where do they go for help? What support can I give them at home? What's your advice for me as a parent? Uh, I, I would say the first one, first level of advice would be to um, contact your child's teacher. Um, hopefully the teacher has set up some office hours or some time where the they offer time for the students to come in after school or before school for additional uh, additional help. Um, it is going to be, I, I, I will ask parents to kind of bear with us as we go through our first transition year because um, we're learning the standards, we're kind of learning how things are working um, in the classroom as well. And the grades are going to probably be a little bit lower because the rigor is a little bit increased. And so we're, we're going to be working with how do we implement the uh, assessments more in the classroom so our children are more successful um, with the standards while we are also learning those standards as well. So I say the, if, you're, if you're seeing some difficulty, I would say contact your child's teacher um, first and then maybe just have, maybe have a sit down and say, hey, this is what we're doing and here's some things that you can help your child at home. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Turner. And it sounds like we have some great advice on how to help our students in science. Please, if you have any questions about NJGSS, please contact your science teacher or you can contact myself. Thank you.